to the $100 MBA show, the business podcast that's got more value per second that a line graph of it would go through the roof because we're all about delivering as much value as possible every single day in around 10 minutes with our daily 10-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. Make sure you check out our free guides. One of our most popular free guides is our one-page business plan template. And you can download it for free over at 100mba.net slash guides. In today's episode, you will learn what every entrepreneur should pack when traveling. I'm going to share with you my traveling checklist, whether you're traveling for a business meeting, for a conference, for a speaking gig, whatever it is, this is it. This is my list of things I must have with me when I'm traveling for business. Speaking of business, let's get down to business. Today's episode of the $100 MBA show is sponsored by FreshBooks, the easy to use invoicing solution designed for small business owners. If you're looking for a super simple, easy way to create and send invoices, organize your expenses, and track your time, look no further. FreshBooks is the answer. And now you can try FreshBooks for free. Just go to freshbooks.com slash MBA for 30 days of free FreshBooks. Again, that's freshbooks.com slash MBA. There's nothing worse than traveling for business and then feeling like, oh, I can't believe I forgot that. I needed that. I know that pain, and that's why I'm going to share with you a list that we've created. Nicole and I, every time we travel, we make sure we take these things with us. This is especially important if you're traveling for business, whether that's for a business meeting or for a presentation or for a conference or you're speaking on stage, or maybe you're even just meeting up with some of your business partners or teammates. The point here is is that you're going to need to make sure you don't forget your essentials. So let me jump right into it and share with you my list. We're also going to include this list in today's show notes. So if you go to 100mba.net slash MBA395, you can get this list right there on our website. All right, so I've broken up this list into categories. The first category is tech. And the first one is kind of obvious. It's your laptop. Make sure you take your laptop and the charger that goes with it. A lot of us, we forget our chargers and we're scrambling asking for people, hey, do you have a charger? Do you have a charger? Make sure you have your charger and your laptop in your little personal bag. The next piece of tech is a VGA adapter. This is especially important if you have a Mac because Macs don't have a VGA port straight onto the laptop. You have to use a Firewire or a Thunderbolt adapter. So make sure you have that adapter with you because a lot of times you're going to need it in order to project to a screen, maybe if you're speaking on stage or even just giving a presentation in a boardroom. It's better to be safe than sorry than to have no way to project your presentation on your laptop that you worked so hard on. Some places they have HDMI and you know a lot of MacBooks have HDMI ports, but don't rely on that. Always have your VGA adapter with you and you can buy one off Amazon for less than $10. The next thing is a presentation clicker. These are one of those things that let you move through your slides through a remote that you control with your laptop via Bluetooth or USB. Now, a lot of places you go to, like conferences or boardrooms, they say they have one there, but often it might not be working. You may not be used to it. You want to have your own that you use all the time. So when you're rehearsing your speech or you're rehearsing your presentation, you're comfortable with it. You know exactly how it feels when you click the next slide, all that stuff. Again, you could pick this up off Amazon. It's not that expensive at all. I got the clicker that I use for about $30. Now, these clickers run on batteries, often AAA batteries, so make sure you bring extra batteries. Even if you just put a fresh pair in there, bring some extra batteries. Technology will often challenge you, so make sure you have those batteries with you. Next piece of tech, your phone charger. We often charge our phones the night before we travel, and we just keep it in the plug, we forget it. So make sure you have an extra phone charger with you. There's nothing worse than having a dead phone when you're traveling. And most of the new smartphones, they double as a USB connection to your laptop if you need to connect your phone to your laptop. And your phone can also work as a backup clicker if your clicker completely dies. Now, I've done this before with my iPhone where I control my keynote with uh, my keynote app on the iPhone itself via Wi-Fi. All right, what other tech items should you bring? A USB drive. Some people call this a thumb drive. I use a little scan disk drive that's literally the size of a penny. And it has 64 gigabytes of memory. So it's great to have as a backup. I put my presentations on there as well as my laptop. And it's also great sometimes you need to transfer information. Sometimes you go somewhere and they say, hey, you have to use the laptop that's at the podium. And you have no way to transfer your actual 
presentations on your laptop. So you have a great way to do that with a USB drive. The next piece of tech is headphones. How are you going to listen to the $100 MBA show on the go? No, seriously, headphones are essential and you need them just in case the airline doesn't offer you uh, headphones. If you're on a long flight, you need to listen to the movie that you're watching. And it comes handy for the next piece of tech I want to mention is make sure you load up your phone or your iPad or your iPod with podcasts and music. Sometimes a great playlist of music can really get you pumped up for whatever you're going to, whether that's a business meeting or a presentation. So make sure you have those loaded. Sometimes we have them on our laptop and they're not on our iPhone or whatever. Make sure that's sorted before you travel. All right, the next category is physical items. On the top of the list is business cards. Business cards are still the best way to transfer information to people quickly about what you do. They can take your business card, they take a look at it, they can find out about you later on. Make sure you have enough business cards with you. I like to always have around 500 business cards printed handy. And if you're looking for a deal on business cards, Visaprint is a sponsor. Check out our resources page at 100mba.net slash resources. They hook us up with a great deal. The other physical item is a notebook, whether small or big, you need to have something to jot down ideas, notes. Maybe somebody's giving you some information very quickly and you need to write it down. Opening up your phone may not be the fastest way. Speaking of writing, bring several pens, three or four pens. Pens are easy to lose and sometimes you need them with you, especially if you're traveling abroad, you need to fill out you know, immigration forms or simply because you want to take some notes and make sure you're not searching for a pen. We talked about writing. What about reading? I like to bring a book or two with me when I'm traveling, depending on how long I'm traveling for. I like physical books, but uh, I also have books on my iPad. So if you have books on your iPad or tablet or on your Kindle, make sure you bring that along with you. So you can sometimes just clear your mind and read something interesting, whether that's fiction, nonfiction, business, non-business, whatever it is. Having a book allows you to kind of just focus outside of what you're doing for a second and take a break. And the last item on this category is cash. You never know when you need cash, and I like to keep cash with me when I'm traveling, whether you're tipping somebody or you have to purchase something and they only accept cash. Some places, they only accept cash. I know they're few and far these days, but you never know, and you don't want to be caught where you can't purchase something you really need. So I recommend having $100 in cash with you when you travel, and I actually have a formula of denominations of that cash. So I like to take two $20 bills, two tens, six $5 bills, and 10 singles. Yes, I actually do this when I travel because I feel like this is a good breakdown of the certain amount of bills I will need when I travel, whether it's for tipping or purchasing things. And if you don't spend it, that's great. You can deposit again in your bank if you want. But the point is, is that you have it just in case. All right, my next category is clothes. Now, everybody has their own sense of style, their own sense of fashion, but there are some things I want to recommend that you bring with you regardless of the way you like to dress. Number one might surprise you, a swimsuit. Bring a swimsuit with you because... No matter where you go, you might go to a hotel that has a spa, that has a pool, whether indoor or outdoor, and it's a great way for you to relax when you're traveling. Going for a quick swim is also great exercise, and it's a great way to get a good workout in really quickly. So bring a swimsuit. It comes in handy. The next piece of clothing is comfortable shoes. You should always have comfortable shoes with you. I like to travel with comfortable shoes, and they're usually like sneakers. I like New Balance. They're comfortable for me. But being comfortable can do a lot in terms of your state of mind. Keeps you relaxed, keeps you confident. But you also want to pack one pair of formal shoes. Whether you're a man or a woman, formal shoes can dress up your outfit, especially if you're going to go to a business meeting. You may need to dress up one of the nights for a dinner or something like that. Which brings me to also packing one formal outfit. If you're a man, you may want to bring in a dress shirt or something that you can you know, wear that looks a little bit more upscale. And that may just be like a jacket, like a suit or a sports jacket. And for women, you may want to bring some accessories. I know for Nicole, she brings some accessories to dress up an outfit that go with her dressy shoes. Guys, I got one more category of things to bring when you're traveling as an entrepreneur. But before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, Digital Marketing Institute. Visit dmipostgrad.com to download a brochure from Digital Marketing Institute and find out why studying their postgraduate diploma in digital marketing is the perfect way to get ahead in a fast-paced, high-growth industry filled with exciting career opportunities and salaries. 
The Digital Marketing Institute is a leading global provider of digital education and has equipped over 10,000 students across the world. They've given them the skills and knowledge they need to excel in the digital industry. The postgraduate diploma is designed, developed, and taught by industry experts whose knowledge of cutting-edge trends and specialist experience will help shape you into an accomplished digital marketer with a skill set that covers everything from mobile, social media, and search marketing to digital strategy and planning. Studying online means you can enjoy 24-hour access to video lectures, downloadable support materials, and interactive quizzes, whether you're using your tablet during your morning commute, your mobile device on your lunch break, or at home on your laptop. Study wherever you want and whenever you want and complete the course at a pace that suits you. Whether you want to secure a new job, move up in your current organization, or grow your own business, visit dmipostgrad.com to download a brochure for Digital Marketing Institute's postgraduate diploma in digital marketing and start realizing your digital career goals. All right, guys, my last category in my entrepreneur's packing list is health and wellness. And on the top of the list is a vitamin I highly recommend. They're not paying us a dime for this. They're not a sponsor, but I've used them over the years and I feel like they're great. And they're called the wellness formula. And the purpose of wellness formula is to boost your immune system. And it's completely all natural. The point is, is that when you're traveling, your body's taking a beating. You're on airplanes, you're tired, you're not getting much sleep, you're staying up late. So your immune system might be down. So you need to make sure you combat and make sure you boost your immune system. And wellness formula does that very well. I highly recommend it. In fact, it's one of those standard things they have on movie sets because they know that actors stay up all night, they're working on their lines, they may get sick. It's a great way to prevent them from getting sick. And along those lines, I also recommend you bring with you vitamin C. I take along the chewable vitamin Cs because they're just easy to take on the go. I just chew them up and I just go on my day. When I'm traveling, I probably take around 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. It really helps me keep my energy up and prevent me from getting sick. The next thing I recommend you bring is a pain reliever. Whether you like to take ibuprofen or aspirin, whatever it is, just take what works for you because you may get a headache and you want to make sure that you feel 100% before you, you know, start your presentation or do business with your client. You may not need to take it, but it's there just in case. Another thing you may not think about, but it's mints. You should bring mints with you or gum, whatever you prefer, because if you're at a conference, you're going to be speaking to a lot of people. You want to make sure that your morning coffee breath is uh, you know tolerable. You have your mints with you to make sure that you don't offend anybody in any way. It's just one of the things you should take with you to make sure that your conversation is not a disaster. The last two things I recommend is some small snacks with you. Bring some small snacks along with you just in case you get hungry. If you're on a long flight, uh, you might have a, you know a transit or something going on where you you know you don't have a chance to really grab something, but you want to eat something. So Nicole and I bring nuts, granola bars, sometimes dry fruit. Nothing melts, nothing goes bad. It's just an easy thing to take with you to you know, kind of hold you over to the next meal. And the last thing I recommend bringing with you is a reusable water bottle. Making sure that you're hydrated, drinking enough water while you're traveling really helps you stay healthy. Drink more water than you normally do and keep your water bottle filled while you're on the plane. So you can go and get your water bottle filled sometimes on the airplane itself by you know, at that corner where the, where the cabin crew stays and they can fill it up for you. So don't worry if you can't take something that has water in it before you get on the plane because I know there's regulations where you can't take liquids with you. You could bring an empty bottle. Once you get past security, you could fill it up with the water fountains or on the plane. All right, guys, that wraps up today's lesson. It's a long list, but it's handy. So keep it in mind the next time you travel for business. I hope this helps, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you did, let us know. Drop us an iTunes rating and review. We love hearing from you. We read every single review. It helps support the show and helps us rank better on iTunes. And of course, everybody who leaves us an iTunes rating and review enters our weekly random draw to win a free ride, a free lifetime membership to the $100 MBA training and community. All right, guys, that's it for me today. But until tomorrow, I want to leave you with this. There's two things I like to keep in mind when I'm traveling because it does affect the way I feel and behave and act. And sometimes I get cranky if I don't take care of these two things. And those two things are is sleeping enough and eating enough. Sometimes when you travel, your schedule is all out of whack and you forget to have a meal and you just feel yourself all cranky for no reason. And you realize, oh, I haven't eaten in like eight hours. So make sure that you are conscious of the fact that you have to get in your meals so you know you feel good and you have the sustenance and the nutrition you need to keep going. Uh, you may want to keep a light with salads, with a lot of greens. Try to lay off the snacks that much. If they're snacks, try to keep them healthy. And when it comes to sleep, make sure you're getting at least eight hours a night. I know that when you go to conferences, the late nights, you're talking to a lot of people, it's tiring. But getting enough sleep will make sure that you can keep going strong. 
All right, guys, I hope that helps, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode. I'll see you then. Take care.